Hello friends, welcome back to product and brand management. We talked about brand value chain. We talked about several stages of brand value chain in preceding sections and now deciphering the secret or should I not be uh, saying it that, that it is a known fact now. But the secret lies in the fact that how to actually steer the value chain that is what we have to learn. There are several actions, there are several elements which we would be talking about in terms of these, the strategic uh, learning which we should be going through for driving the brands. Let us talk about brand elements first a very soft kind of a subject, very creatively associated subject in terms of uh, you know its association with brand and branding. And there are lots of researches which have been done in terms of you know linguistic elements of brand names for example or, or let us say slogans and jingles and whole lot of a world of branding is represented by elements of brand. Let us see what are those. You see, the different brand elements include brand names, URLs, logos and symbols, characters, slogans, jingles, packages and signage also. And, and these in totality or let us say many a times individually as well represent a brand in terms of its recognition, in terms of its, its uh, you know uh, association with the customer, in terms of evoking feelings, in terms of its resonance even. So, let us see you know how brand elements work, how marketers think in terms of brand elements. Brand elements serve to identify and differentiate the brand. There they are looked upon with the perspective of being a device actually. And the customer based brand equity model suggests that marketers should choose brand elements to enhance brand awareness, facilitate the formation of strong, favorable and unique brand associations or elicit positive brand judgments and feelings. The test of brand building ability of a brand element is what consumers would think or feel about the product if they knew only that particular brand element. For example, a symbol, for example, a name, what comes to your mind? And apart from that, a customer does not know anything, for example, do not remember anything at that particular moment about the product. So, you see, that is where the brand building ability of a brand elements comes to four. Let us see some examples, but before that let us see the criteria of which, which, which are required to be understood for choosing brand elements. Broadly authors have suggested six criteria, wherein three are related to building a brand's equity or, or let us say it is it's, it's an offensive strategy or let us say aggressive strategy or proactive strategy. And other three elements which are transferability, adaptability and protectability are related to maintaining brand's equity in the face of different opportunities and constraints. So, it is a sort of a defensive role which, which these three elements play. Let us see the proactive role played by memorability for example, first of all. You know memorability is related to easy recognition, easy recall as simple as that. Recognition and recall are very important because at that particular point of need, if you go to a medical shop, a young kid has 
cut her finger and in an urgent need you want uh, should I say bandaid that is where memorability comes in should I say handyplast also that also is related to memorability and recall you you never say that give me you know a, a sort of a bandage or something to cover this wound up you just say bandaid meaningfulness it has an element of being descriptive and persuasive and we are talking of brand elements here and elements we have talked about in terms of names urls logos uh, jingles and slogans and so on likability fun and interesting that is the aspect of likability rich visual and verbal imagery aesthetically pleasing so these are proactive aspects wherein you know they they have a strategic contribution in terms of being proactively used for building a brand's equity and on the other side transferability within and across product categories how easily that name can traverse between the category across geographic boundaries and cultures as such and this is very important there are several stories about for example uh, you know uh, a slogan or a jingle verbatim used in some other country which deciphered in terms of different kind of a meaning for that audience and so on and then you have heard these stories and you can go to again uh, any reliable source and uh, you know learn about that adaptability wherein an aspect of being flexible and updatable that is uh, where the brand element is required to be and protectability wherein it is legally protectable and competitively protectable as well that people should not be able to copy it and not only in terms of just you know uh, in, in uh, terms of uh, avoiding the legal aspect that has also to be taken very uh, you know care of very carefully let us start with elements now so first element is name so brand name is that part of a brand that can be spoken it includes letters numbers or words and and this is a definition from american marketing association dictionary brand names can be an extremely effective shorthand means of communication what's in a name you must have heard of but everything is in a name if we think if we think in terms of a brand name what's in a name comes to our mind when a name becomes successful as a brand so you put up any you know name to to a product if it is doing well it becomes a brand name in itself and and many a times there are many brands which have done well uh, let's say you know they they come from the names of the families they come from the names of uh, you know uh, their their uh, founders and so on and and many products wherein uh, let's say you know people from a particular country they do not understand that what the meaning of that particular name is for example earlier uh, many people wouldn't have known not known that you know what toyota means or what hyundai means but still they worked well and on the other side you strategically think in terms of a name and propel it and that supports your branding journey as well both ways it works but let's see how so brand names can be an extremely effective shorthand means of communication few factors to keep in mind while naming a brand are naming guidelines simplicity and ease of pronunciation in spelling familiarity and meaningfulness differentiated distinctive and unique brand distinctive element to uh, the name brand awareness and associations now you see the point is it's it's very important to understand that what is going to click so we can put all our understanding all uh, you know a, a systematic Uh, progression of uh, let's say our, our linguistic understanding or any other for that matter but we must know that at the end of the day whatever we are thinking in terms of a name 
representing a brand should click in the minds of the customers. So, brand name taxonomy is related to being descriptive. For example, Pizza Hut says that it is a pizza based organization, although they sell several other products also. General Motors, and then there is an element of a brand name being evocative. Amazon, Nike has you know a personality connotation also then there has there is there is a synthetic aspect to it that it it, it uh, you know it is derived from some words basically it comes from let's say for example you know dulux may be associated with durable being durable and you know luxurious as well lux durability and luxury and then many founders as i said you know they are associated with their organizations names or product names and uh, for example, Tata's, uh, Aditya Birla Group, Disney and so on and MDH. Now, as I said that there is an aspect of names and linguistics. Consumer understanding of a brand, its image and its meaning derives at least initially from the brand name, you see that that resonates that actually comes to your mind it brings a picture and if you do not know about the product at all then definitely it has to play a very important kind of a role imbuing a brand name with meaning has a number of advantages because embedded meanings can affect brand evaluations memory for ads carrying those brand names memory for brand name themselves there are three ways brands name meanings can be sourced one is phonetic symbolism the other is orthographic symbolism and the last is semantic symbolism it's not a complex thing it is related to words and meanings and sentences so just go to the uh, you know fundamental definitions of these terms if you want to further dwell into but the point is how it would ring the bell that is the objective of this discussion now you see phonetic devices wherein uh, you know there, there is an aspect of alliteration consonant repetition and then i would suggest you to think of in the spirit of the names which resonate with these descriptions, uh, I would definitely uh, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to the fact that brand managers or uh, heads of the organizations or people who generate and originate brand names or are people from the world of creatives and advertising who actually work upon these things, they look into these elements scientifically, they look into linguistics and uh, with, with lots of creativity. So, the, they, they work upon these things and that is why we must understand these, but again there are several examples wherein we can put up them into these categories to understand the concepts themselves. So, it is not that, that it is a methodology which is always followed in terms of putting up a brand name. So, alliteration wherein consonant repetition is there for example, Paypal, Coca Cola and so on. So, so it is a matter of how it sounds, how it is pronounced actually. Then onomatophia wherein use of syllable phonetics to resemble the object itself, zoom, twitter, you see it has worked, it has worked quite a lot. And then there is a masculine rhyme, there is a feminine rhyme, then there is blending. So, these are concepts which are you know self explanatory for example blending you have you know uh, a morphemic combination usually with elision and that is duracell or facebook for example although i would not uh, uh, suggest that uh, you know you should think of facebook in terms of uh, wherein blending was used as a mode of developing this name probably it was but but if you will go into the story of these brands 
you would realize many a times a systematic progression was used many a times facebook came in as an instinctive name to the founder and it worked and today we are discussing it with relevance to blending in terms of phonetic devices now orthographic devices wherein unusual or incorrect spellings tumblr flicker and those kind of things are there so so again you know but remember one thing which is very important when we are talking of a brand's name whenever that organization will be thinking in terms of customer expansion brand name should not restrict that although many a times even if the brand name belongs to a particular kind of a family it originates from a particular kind of a family it may limit itself to a particular kind of a product because by the time they think in terms of product expansion or brand expansion it has resonated so deeply with that kind of a product that customer doesn't expects that organization to bring in a different diversified product at all for example can we think of coca cola producing a different kind of a variant also many a times it's difficult for them they have been trying that and coca cola is doing exceptionally well all over the world so initialism wherein ibm international business machines comes to that it, it is a, a resembling example that is why we have used that acronyms wherein adidas founders name adolf dazzler so it it works for them then metaphors are also you know these are semantic devices where an imaginative way to show that somebody something has the same qualities as another thing we all know what metaphors are safari starbucks then there is an element of personification then there are oxymorons which are used for as far as uh, naming the brands go now there are other elements of linguistics in branding you see branding relies heavily on language and consumers often come to know a brand through language the language in advertising or on packaging the words used in social media or word of mouth brand names themselves serve to communicate the meaning of a brand and influence perception memory attitudes and behavior and language plays a fundamental role primarily because its structural properties affect how people think and that is where i would draw your attention the structural properties of language and its effect on how people think that is where we should focus upon you see language in identification of a brand language affects people's way of categorizing objects also so structural properties of language in association of people's thought process and that is that is what we should be thinking in terms of for for these kind of things you know you can read several authors who have uh, written on this so to help consumers identify a brand managers should pay special attention to several linguistic constructs how this word would sound how this word would decipher or what kind of an imagination this word would bring to the minds of people and then would they be imagining the product and then subsequently the product category and then subsequently if a diversified product is added to this you know whole thing would it resonate with that as well many a times you would realize that patanjali is the name of a sage in india and patanjali as an organization is developing so many products with the same name so would they have gone through this kind of a linguistic associated exercise for going for this i don't think so but then all this can be seen with reference to that example how is it working for them actually that should be our main point of concentration so let's not get confused on the fact that you know they would have thought this way as far as their example goes we can always think in terms of that all this can be relevantly seen with their example as such or their name as such now for 
You see, to help consumers identify, a brand manager should pay special attention to several linguistic constructs as I was saying. For instance, classifiers are one structural property of languages such as Mandarin, Japanese, but not of other languages such as English and German and many classifiers are used to distinguish you know, words. For example, animate to inanimate, measurable to immeasurable and so on. So, you have put up a classifier you know, uh, to distinguish a particular kind of, of word. You see, thus Chinese speakers are more likely to perceive two distinct objects as similar if they share a classifier than if they do not. From a managerial point of view, this has important consequences for brand positioning and retail layout strategies. For example, Chinese department stores often group together objects that share the same classifier such as scarves, whereas the same does not happen in US stores. And in today's globalized world, this is a very, very important thing for us to understand. As the increasing use of pronoun brand nomenclature might suggest, example, iPhone, MySpace, YouTube, pronouns are yet another set of language elements that have been shown to significantly affect consumers' perception. We are talking of how it works. Again, I would suggest that it is not necessary for us to think that they would have done this way, although they might have. Now, most recently, Kaczynski and Carnival build on these findings by incorporating product positioning. Specifically, they show that I brand names garner more favorable responses only when the brand is positioned in personal benefits, whereas U brands garner more favorable consumer responses when the brand is positioned on social benefits. That is a kind of research which has given particular results which are useful uh, to develop our understanding. I definitely advise you to think of it. Now, integrating linguistics for intended perceptions of brand personality to significantly influence consumers integration of all brand information through language and thus their perceptions of brand personality and brand relationships. Managers should concentrate their efforts primarily around the brand's linguistic identity. Even the font choices for logo or the packaging will convey specific brand personality traits. For example, a serif type of font and it is very interesting, Times New Roman of the Time magazine is perceived as elegant, charming, beautiful, interesting, whereas a sans serif type of font, example Helvetica used in Skype Pay software is perceived as manly, powerful and smart. That is an inference which has been brought by authors, reference is given for your say now onwards start noticing the fonts and the effect they make on your preferences as such. Linguistics cue brand associations also. You see special consideration should be given to the choice of other brand elements such as product packaging as they may generate strong brand associations and I would be talking about this once again in packaging for a while. So, in fact, a certain combination of packaging elements might become powerful visual vocabulary which symbolizes the entire brand. We have seen that in case of Snickers. And then linguistics cue emotional connection as well and that is very important because language has that one very important objective of doing that. The order of words chosen, the words themselves, their rhythm and tone of voice will all evoke different emotions and actions. How things are said, what is being said is very important. People who understand poetry would definitely come along with me in the and, and people who do not understand that would also come along with me. In the context of service encounters, several studies have explored the role of auditory cues such as the accent of communication source that is salesperson how he behaves, how he puts up the things basically, how he speaks, how he talks about and so on. And that is why many a times you go to restaurants, the way they represent their brand, the way they talk to you, the way they ask you what would you like to have, that is what I am speaking of. So, implications of interactions ask for further research in case of artificial intelligence agents not only in text based online communications, but also in voice based systems and this I am referring to uh, in terms of that the findings show that a salesperson with a standard accent or dialect is perceived more favorably and inspires more favorable purchase intentions than foreign accented salespersons and so on. Some kind of 
you know researchers have supported that as well. Linguistics Q brand symbolism. Special consideration should be given to the use of verbal and visual metaphors as they tend to stimulate deeper level of processing and curiosity about the brand thus further enhancing brand symbolism. For example, arrow from A to Z within Amazon e-retailer logo suggests that the company sells everything and at the same time depicts a smile that their customers would experience by shopping on their website. It is an interesting thing and here I would suggest one thing. Try to go to the stories which are behind development of these symbols, logos, names and so on and you would realize that lot of thought process has gone into those and almost every brand has those stories. Find those, read those, it would be interesting for you. Now URLs, you know, URLs specify locations of pages on the web and are also commonly referred to as domain names. They are also very important when we talk of being a brand element course. So, URLs protect their brands from unauthorized use in other domain names and we are all aware of these things. Now I am coming to logos and symbols. Logos have a long history as a means to indicate origin, ownership or association. I could have gone into a technical discussion associated with logos wherein I would have deciphered that how every logo is designed but because we are focusing upon the role of a logo into the story of brand development that is why I would refrain from going into designing of a logo and, and you know it would deviate our discussion towards being uh, a design based kind of a discussion. But I would definitely suggest you to, to go to those descriptions they are easily available on the websites of specially the organizations which have designed the logos of different organizations and you would realize that what kind of a meticulous thinking they have gone through. For example, Apple has a long story uh, to tell about. So, logos range from corporate names or trademarks, word marks with text only written in distinctive form to entirely abstract designs that may be completely unrelated to the word mark, corporate name or corporate activities. Non-word mark logos are often called symbols and here we are with beautiful logos, all of them distinctively recognizable, many of them as our aspirations. You see for example, McDonald's brings several memories, several thoughts to us. Mercedes brings aspiration, Apple enjoys a very specific place in our lives today and so on. Instagram is also there and Tata's you will read if you will read the story how did they reach to this logo you would realize that there has been an intense thought process for them to reach to this, this symbol. And you see before this they had several kinds of T's associated with their organization or different organizations for that matter. And, and uh, although uh, probably still everyone recognized that this T represents Tata's but universalizing a logo was a strategic perspective which was required also and desired by the stakeholders as well. And at this moment I still want you to remember the brand value chain discussion we have gone through and just associate the stories of uh, these symbols and logos generated in due course of time and especially for example if you will read uh, the story of uh, logo and symbol of Tata's you would realize that, that that whole story actually resonates with our discussion of the brand value chain itself. I will be coming back to you with some more insights on elements and then switching over towards a different kind of a discussion again uh, you know in terms of strategic perspective of brand management. Till then just go into 
each of the logos or several other logos you know decipher their stories think of those stories with a strategic orientation and i'll be catching up with you later on till then goodbye